Hey my dear friends, once again welcome back to the channel. I'm Gaurav here and that's the 21st video of this series. So in today's video we'll add VFX Masala in our game which we made in the last video. So let's get started but before we begin as I always say if you're new in this channel then please check out our previous videos first. Also subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon, it's absolutely free. And now here we have all our three effects that we created in the previous video. So first of all we have collision effect. We will use that effect whenever our projectile will hit anything like walls or the enemy. And then next here we have destroy effect as its name suggests by itself that this effect is related to the destruction. So whenever our player or the enemy is destroyed then at that time we will use that effect and also at the same time we will use thunder flash effect. Ok so first thing first, let's open the projectile script and then here we will create a game object type variable and we will name it collision effect. Then within the on collision enter function here we will instantiate the collision effect so that whenever our projectile collides with anything then at the same time we will instantiate the collision effect. Well cause in the last few videos we have already learned about how to instantiate any object in a game scene, right? So I guess it won't be too hard for you guys to instantiate the collision effect in the game scene. So pause that video and accept that easy challenge and instantiate the collision effect by yourself. And I'll meet you in a second. Ok so welcome back guys. I'm sure you guys must have already completed that easy challenge and now it's my turn to finish that task. So here I'll write a simple line to instantiate the collision effect. Instantiate and here first we'll give the game object. The object we want to spawn which is the collision effect and then the position where we want our collision effect to be spawned. In our case it's the same position where the game object will collide which is transform.position and then it's orientation which is cotonian.identity. And now hop back to the unity and first of all here we'll add collision effect on both our projectile pvaps. Now let's test it. So here we are having a little issue with the collision effect. Although it looks fine and and you can leave it as it is. But I don't want to see that effect whenever these projectiles will hit the ground. I think it would be nice if the collision effect wasn't shown on the ground. Ok here we will use tags to solve that problem. So let's create a new tag and name it ground. And then put that tag on the ground. And now hop back to the projectile script and here we'll add a simple if statement to avoid the projectile system to instantiate on the ground by its tag. So let's do that. If other.gameObject.tag is equal to ground then just simply return. It was so simple isn't it? Now let's go back to the unity and let's test it once again. And it's fixed. Now we are done with the projectile script and now it's time to add other two effects. So let's add them in our game. So let's take a look in the health script and here first we'll create a two game object type variable for our both effects and then we'll name it destroy effect and thunder flash effect. So whenever our player or the enemy is destroyed then at the same time these effects will appear. Now down there we'll create a coroutine. Well I'm creating a coroutine cause here I wanna wait for 5 seconds and then when our player or the enemy is destroyed then at the same time these effects will appear in the game scene. So let's do that and here I'll create a coroutine function. Ok so first of all let me clarify about coroutine. Well whenever we wanna stop the execution of the function at the runtime for the desired time period we use coroutine to do so. And when the given time is over then once again our coroutine will start executing from exactly where it was stopped and then the end of the coroutine. So I would use a special kind of function to do this which is I <laughs> That name sounds like comes from Perry the Platypus animated series. Ok to make I enumerator type function we just have to write I enumerator before the name of the function. Cause it's the written type or rather you say I enumerator is the base interface for all non-generic enumerators. And then the function name, um, I'll name it destroy vfx and then parentheses. Now here you see we are getting that red squiggly line cause I enumerator is looking for yield written statement. 
okay here i will write yield return statement and the yield return statement returns one element at a time and the return type of the yield keyword is either i enumerable or i enumerator so in simple words yield return is the point where we want to stop the execution at the very end of the last frame while waiting for the next frame but we don't want to wait just for the next frame right because here we want to wait for a while until the player or the enemy's game object won't be destroyed. So to wait for the desired time period, here we will write new wait for seconds and then here in the parentheses I will give it a time to wait for 5 seconds. Cause here I want to wait for the time when our player or the enemy's game object will be destroyed. And after that we will instantiate destroy effect. And then at the same time we will activate the thunder flash effect. Thunder flash effect dot set active true. And then immediately I'll deactivate it. So thunder flash effect dot set active false. But if we do this, then we'll never see the thunder flash effect cause it'll be very very fast. So here we have to give it a little pause so that we can see that effect on the screen. Okay, so do that. Once again here we will use yield return statement in between its activation and deactivation. And here I'll wait for a very short time like 0 0.05 seconds and then I'll call it within the take damage function here in that if statement. So whenever our player or the enemy's health is zero, then that coroutine will be called and then it'll wait for 5 seconds and after that when our player or the enemy is destroyed, then at the exact same time we will see these effects on the game scene. Ok so calling i enumerator function can be a little bit tricky cause you cannot call i enumerator like a normal function but if you try to call i enumerator like a normal function then it will not gonna work and it will give you errors. Now let's take a look at how to call i enumerator. So to call i enumerator we simply write start coroutine and then the parentheses. So inside the parentheses it will take a parameter of either coroutine call or string of the coroutine's name and then semicolon and that's it. That's how we create and call coroutines. Well, this can be a little bit tricky for you guys but once you will be used to it then it will be very helpful in your programming career. Ok now let's go back to the unity and let's test it. But first here we have to apply their effects on both player and the enemy. So let's add them. First thunder flash effect and then from within the prefabs folder I would drag destroy effect on them. And then hit the play button. Now let's go closer to the enemy and let's see what we got there. And now let's shoot some projectiles. And here we go. We don't see any effects over here. Hmm. Let's try to figure out what's happening here. Let's go back to the health script and see what's happening here. Oh yeah, basically the issue is that since the player or the enemy is destroyed after 5 seconds and then at the same time we are trying to show these effects. So cause here we are waiting for 5 seconds and the game object is also gonna destroy within 5 seconds. So, so that's why after 5 seconds we can't see these effects. Cause if we don't have a game object on the game scene where this script is attached on then that's the reason why we can see these effects. Note that. If the game object that is hosting the coroutine script is destroyed, then the coroutine will also stop. So let's reduce the desired time to 4.94 seconds to see them. I think that will be enough time. Now let's go back to the unity and hit the play button and test it again. And great, it looks so awesome. But now, there is another issue has cropped up. As you see here, we have spawning so many particle systems within the scene and they are just taking so much unnecessary data for no reason. So now, we have to get rid of these particle system from the game when the particle animation is complete. Cause if we will not delete them from the game, then in the end our game will crash and that's not a good sign for any game, right? Well, it's actually quite easy to deal with this situation. All we have to do is delete this particle system from the game scene as soon as the animation is complete. So let's do that. Let's create a simple script which will destroy these effects after they completed their animation. Okay, in the script, we'll create a simple destroy function and then within that we'll give it a time. And now, if you guys remember that, in this series we've already learned about how to destroy any object from the game scene right but if in case you forgot about it then i have given its link on the card 
Now, I'm giving you a simple and easy challenge to destroy these particle system from the game scene. So take that easy challenge and try to fix that issue by your own. And I'll meet you in a second. Okay, so welcome back friends. I'm sure you guys must have already completed that simple task. But if not, then let's fix it together. Now first, select both of these effects and then here on the inspector tab, I'll click on the add component button and here I'll search for self destroy script. Okay, there is no such script. So then we will create a new script which will name self destroy. And now in that script within the update, I'll create a destroy function. And then here I will pass this game object. Note that the game object with the small g represents to the current game object who's hosting this script. And after that, here I'll make a float type variable so that I can give it a time from the inspector time. So let's create it. Serialize field, private, float, destroy after seconds and that's it. Now let's go back to the unity and let's see. Now here at first I'll give it a time and I think a second would be fine. Now hit the play button and shoot some treasure tiles. And that looks awesome. These particles are deleting by themselves. So I think that's all in today's video. And now in the next video we will start working on music and sound effects for our game. So till then keep learning, keep practicing and I'll meet you in the further upcoming videos. For now. See you later.